All right, so let's uh, think about our pizza equation again. All right, um, let's think, uh, well, let's play with this scenario. Let's say we have uh, four crusts, 15 ounces of sauce, and 10 cups of cheese, okay? How many pizzas can we make? All right, so we've got three uh, ingredients, crust, sauce, and cheese. How many pizzas could we make? Well, we'd have to first figure out um, how many pizzas we can make from each ingredient, okay? So of course, with the crust, since it's a one-to-one -one ratio, we can make four pizzas. Uh, the sauce is a five-to-one uh, ratio, and so with the sauce, I can only make three pizzas. With 10 cups of cheese, because it's a two-to-one ratio, well, I can make five pizzas with the cheese. All right, so how many pizzas can I make? Well, um, as you probably um, would quickly, quickly realize, you can really only make three pizzas. Once you run, make three pizzas, you've run out of sauce. You're out of your 15 ounces of sauce. And so you've got crust and cheese. Um, you could perhaps make cheesy bread, but you can't make any more pizzas. Okay, you've ran out of sauce. All right. Uh, the same thing, the same type of uh, thing happens for chemical reactions. Whenever you have more than one reactant, if they're reacting, eventually one could run out and that would stop your chemical reaction. And so whatever one produces the least amount of product is going to run out first and we call that our limiting reactant. All right. So the limiting reactant is the reactant that runs out first stopping the chemical reaction um, the easiest way to figure that out is actually to calculate, just like we did with the pizzas, calculate how much uh, pizzas we can make, how much product we can make with each of the reactants, um, and figure out which one's the least, and which one's gonna stop it, which one's gonna uh, run out first, okay? So it makes the least amount of product. Okay, so again, for our pizza example, so our 15 ounces of sauce only made three pizzas. Once I made three pizzas, uh, I'm gonna run out of sauce, so I can't make four or five. So three pizzas was the least amount of pizzas I can make, and that leads me back to saying that 15 ounces of sauce, the sauce would be uh, my limiting reactant. And so in our pizza example, the sauce was the limiting reactant. How much product you can make, how much pizza we can make in our last example, is what we refer to as the theoretical yield. And so this is the amount, or at least the maximum amount, the maximum amount of product that is able to be made. I should say it's determined by the limiting reactant. All right, and so in this uh, the pizza example, it was three pizzas. Okay, the three pizzas was the least amount um, that could be made from the limiting reactant, and so that was our. Uh, theoretical yield. Three pizzas in our previous example. All right, so just like uh, we did uh, previously, um, starting with a pizza example, as an analogy, um, we do we can put these uh, ideas and um, 
uh, calculation uh, into use uh, for an actual chemical reaction. So let's say we start out with uh, five molecules of methane, CH4, and eight molecules of oxygen. What is our limiting reactant? What is our theoretical yield? Okay, of course, you know, we usually talk about moles, but we can, of course, moles is just a uh, collection term for atoms or molecules, and so we could talk about this at the molecular level as well. So if we're going to do a stoichiometric calculation, and that's what we would do to determine the re limiting reactant or the theoretical yield, we would, of course, need to um, write out our balanced chemical equation. So what is the balanced chemical equation? All right. So methane reacting with oxygen. Okay. If you have complete combustion of an organic compound with uh, oxygen, uh, the products will always be CO2 and water. And then we need to, of course, balance it. Okay, I've got one carbon on the left side, one carbon on the right side. Good. I've got four hydrogens on the left, two on the right, so I'm going to need to uh, put a coefficient there. I've got two oxygens on the left. I've got two oxygens in carbon, two oxygens in uh, water. So two plus two, that's four, and so I'm going to need a two uh, for oxygen. Okay, so now that I have my balanced chemical equation, I can start to work on this stoichiometric um, calculation. Okay. So, um, for this, for any type of limiting reactant problem or theoretical yield uh, problem, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how much pizza we can make, how much product we can make. In this example, we've got two products. Um, and so, unless we're uh, working with an actual yield, which we'll talk about next, it doesn't really matter which uh, product we calculate this based on. We'll get the same answers, okay? Um, so let's do this for CO2. All right. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with uh, both of my reactants, okay? I've got five methane molecules and eight oxygens, all right? And so how much CO2 can I produce? All right. So um, to figure out how much CO2 I can produce, I just need to, of course, look at my balanced chemical equation and come up with my ratio. For methane, the ratio is 1 to 1. And so for every 1 methane, I'm going to produce 1 CO2. And so that's going to give me 5 times 1 divided by 1. That's probably going to be five CO2 molecules. Methanes cancel out. Uh, for oxygen, let's move this down a little bit. For oxygen, we've got eight oxygens. And if I want to figure out how many CO2s I'm going to produce uh, with that amount of oxygen, I'm going to need to again look at the coefficients of my balanced chemical equation. In this case, it's two moles of oxygen are going to produce one mole of CO2. And so my relationship there is one mole of CO2 for every two moles of oxygen. Oxygen is going to cancel out, and then 8 divided by 2 is 4 CO2s. Okay? So basically, by calculating how much product we can make for both reactants, okay, it's saying that I can make either 4 CO2s or 5 CO2s. How many CO2s can I actually make? Well, it turns out I can actually only make 4 CO2s. Once I make 4 CO2s, I'm going to run out of oxygen. Just like for the pizza example, once I make three pizzas, I'm out of sauce. And so that is my theoretical yield. I can theoretically make four CO2 uh, molecules. And so now that I know my theoretical yield, that actually tells me what my limiting reactant is. Limiting reactant is always made from, or excuse me, the theoretical yield is always made from the limiting reactant. So oxygen is my limiting reactant. Uh, CH4 what we would call that, that's my excess reactant. And so we've got leftovers of methane in this case. So of course we uh, use the uh, coefficients of Bout's chemical equation to do this, and we calculated it based on that. In this case it was molecules, we could have said the same thing about moles um, to determine theoretical yield and limiting reactant. But just like uh, previously in the um, uh, glucose examples, um, of course the stoichiometry calculation at the heart of it is the mole to mole ratio 
of the balanced chemical equation. But in the laboratory, of course, we're going to have to measure how much uh, material we have in terms of mass or volume. And so a lot of times we're also going to have to do a mass to mass conversion vector, which we'll do in our next example.